This video was brought to you by Patreon. Hey you, how's it going? My name is Ruby Price and welcome to a week ago. So currently tonight, Monday Night Rubes, uh, everything's all ready to go. Same with the a week ago vlog that's going live at the same time because for some reason, who knows? <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited. All that jazz, you know. Uh, I've just been doing some admin stuff this morning. Heard back from the job stuff that I was doing towards the end of the week. Should be getting a trial shift. Yay! <laughs> but other than that, you know. Let's just chill out, wait for later tonight, and yeah. I don't really think I caught that on just a basic wooden fishing rod, but okay, Animal Crossing. What the hell is it? Is this a coelacanth? That's a coelacanth. <laughs> hell yeah. It's a living fossil. And I immediately caught a second one. I should probably update these thumbnails. But that's a story for another time. By the way, Monday Night Rubes. I haven't finished getting set up yet, but the live stream starts in four minutes. Ah, the hilarious thing is I've been sat here waiting. <laughs> and it's seven o'clock, so let's go live. And three, two... Oh no, I've gone live. That's good. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. But on that note... Hello, welcome to Monday Night Rubes. I hope you enjoy it for the next hour-ish. We're just gonna, you know, chat, hang out, ask and answer questions. This is an AMA Q&A stream, uh, as all of them have been. Um, but mostly I'm just, I'm just here to have a good time and I hope that you, as the people who are watching this, also have a good time. If you leave with one more serotonin than you actually had when you started this stream, I will take credit for that. And I'll also be pretty happy too, so serotonin all around. And we just finished. Uh, sorry my light went um, about halfway through the stream, that was weird. Uh, like it has been going recently, but money <laughs> is a problem. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. And all of that stuff, I was pretty, uh, I was pretty pleased with the reaction to it at least to me, you know, announcing that a week ago was gonna stop. It at least gives me a nice feeling that people will miss it when it's gone. Like I said on the live stream, I never intended to do a second season of a week ago, but here we are with five or six weeks to go. I need to figure it out because it's gonna confuse me. <laughs> I might have slept in. Yeah, but today I've got some stuff to do for um, job stuff, yeah, gonna get that out of the way. Uh, I do have a read meeting tomorrow, I believe. Um, so it'll be good to have something to show for that as well. <sighs> I can't remember when my, uh, universal credit appointment is, though. I think it's next week. So I just finished editing the new episode of Fresh From The Scene that's coming out this week on Friday featuring Walwyn, uh, my good mate Arthur, yeah, he's got a new single coming out on Friday as well, so you know, you should have already listened to it, but yeah, it was a fun one. Um, probably about 60-40 about wrestling and music. <laughs> uh, um, we did talk for a long time at the end about wrestling. But I, st I still think it would be enjoyable, even even from, you know, whatever perspective and, you know, 
background you have with wrestling etc this is a podcast that you could listen to and still i think enjoy it i hope uh all i've got to do now though is just get the intro sorted and um the outro as well so the new week ago is not performing very well no <laughs> um it was previously called a week ago i engaged in national democracy I've changed its name to a week ago I ranted about birth sex in an attempt to try and, you know, this, it sounds a bit more like a video that people will click on. It's something that I've done before, you know, just change it, change your title. Usually I don't change it so much, usually it's a bit more of a subtle change, but um, the drastic drop off in views between the two a week ago vlogs, I kind of have to do something about that, hence why I've changed it now, so yeah. Uh, but I just finished editing the podcast, it's all uploaded and everything's all good to go. I made the promo graphics and stuff, I've gone for a new sort of look for them, just spice it up a bit, make them look a bit better and stuff and obviously because I'm using stills taken from Zoom, uh, the quality isn't usually that great so yeah. I think what I might start doing is getting like obviously it's all kind of just become as part of you know recording them over zoom i can't just get my phone out and take a selfie with them which is what i was doing beforehand but you know um so i've just been trying to make them a bit more you know nice to look at than semi blurry 720p images <sighs> yeah but if you're thinking, hey Ruby, uh, you know, sell this podcast to me, here's a clip. And as well, I think like a big thing for me, like over the past year, is just seeing how many like people of colour, like black and brown people, um, like across the world are just so into alternative music and are just like super on it. Like literally the first time I kind of saw it was, um, I, I think it was the first lockdown I got approached by the Nova Twins to do um, like a couple of photo shoots for them uh, for some magazine covers and just seeing how much they were killing it. And, you know, they're signed by uh, Jason from 333. And it's just like, they're, like once I started talking to those kind of people and there, there is honestly like my whole Twitter now is just like black emo Twitter. Like everyone on there is just like so, so good and just crushing it. Um, and just seeing how that scene has kind of evolved, I was like, oh, like the worst thing in the world for me would just to be, cause I feel like I've had like a massive part in kind of starting that scene, like from doing covers back in the day. But then I, I kind of just went away. I kind of left it alone for a bit. It just got stale for me. But now I think like a lot of us are just regenerating it and picking it back up. And yeah, the worst thing in the world just to be, see people smashing it and you know kind of putting themselves out there and just to get left behind so i was like ah i need to kind of reclaim my title i need to step back into the ring bring up like you know get some, <laughs> into the squared circle of the alternate exactly. music team exactly mate 100 percent, 100 now if you haven't listened to it already wait till the end of this episode of a week ago there's a link in the description go and have a listen So I just won a second game against Beth. She's gone to pick up Josh from work. 
feel like I'll, I need to like... So it turns out that both my read and Universal Credit appointments were booked for within like five minutes of each other, so I just got one of them to move to Friday. Uh, but I just had my Universal Credit meet for once, and I say for once, it was actually really helpful. Obviously, you know, I mentioned the jobs situation and stuff, um, and the trial shift, and they gave me actual good advice on you know, like helping my circadian rhythm or whatever it's called, um, you know, and helping that to adjust to the situation that I would be in. Um, so yeah, for once, I've left the Universal Credit meeting feeling pretty good. It makes a change. <laughs> so went and got a prescription, also got some pizzas, and we just had some oven pizzas and stuff. But now, now it's NXT, and uh, I've already seen a spoiler. Not fair. So today's plans very quickly went out of the window this morning when I was sick. Yeah, I've been fighting something all week, you know. On Monday I managed to keep it down. Yeah, yesterday I managed to keep it down but today there was just no keeping it down so unfortunately I've spent half of today in bed and the other half just yeah. So, yeah. But I'm feeling better now. Um, ironically, it's like five to midnight, so day's over. <laughs> but tomorrow, I've got a pretty hefty to-do list. And it'll be interesting to see if I get all of those things ticked off. I hope I do, because some of them are pretty exciting. So I just had my read meeting that was rearranged pretty good. Been doing online job training for most of today. Turned out that whilst I was doing it the other day uh, something went wrong and it didn't record my process so I've got to do it again for the sake of bureaucracy. But my read meeting was uh, pretty helpful. Um, they put me forward for some other roles as well because whilst it's good that I'm getting this role potentially I don't necessarily want to be in it but it's something I've got to do so yeah we're looking at other places still as well obviously because yeah something closer to the industry that I want to be in which is good <laughs> um, and also more money more hours um, and not overnight <laughs> but the new episode of the podcast is out fresh from the scene featuring Arthur Walwyn it's been out since midnight there's been a couple of plays so far <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's a link in the description if you want to go and listen to it, which I strongly urge you to do. Guess I better get back on with it. Ah, so, I got all the training stuff done. Um, I have done about half-ish of the proposal that I'm currently writing for a Rube's Media gig. I've barely written proposals before, but you know, it's interesting to say the least. But I'm going to leave the rest of that until tomorrow now, just because it's been a day of non-stop doing stuff, you know. I've not really had a chance to rest. What I have done is uh, I've taken the opportunity, because I'm the only person in the house tonight, for now, uh, to bring my PS4 up and play some F1 on the big TV, because I want to see how, how it's different on such a big screen, you know. Like, this has got to be more of a simulator style, like, experience. Obviously I'm still using a controller, but, yeah. Anyway. Let's, uh, have some fun. Good afternoon, and welcome to what has been a very lazy Saturday so far. Mostly spent playing a very long game of Commander. That was the longest game of Magic I think I've ever played, and, boy, did we not make it easy for ourselves. <laughs> So, what I'm thinking for a late lunch, early evening, there, yeah, late lunch, early dinner, is my bolognese. Um, so I thought, let's do a cooking with rubes, just for all time's sake. Let's get going. Vegan bolognese. Follow me at home. So first of all, you're gonna need all of these things. Don't forget the toothpaste, that's very important. And also you're gonna need this recipe from Tesco. Thank you very much for uh, 
It's vegan spaghetti bolognese bol recipe, but you're gonna need ingredients. You don't really need uh, Colgate. But also, most importantly, you need. Ugh. Red wine. So for some reason they want you to wash your celery. So make sure you wash your celery. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna dice this onion, we're gonna finely chop these carrots, we're gonna dice up this courgette. We're gonna dice up these mushrooms. There's a lot of dicing going on. We're gonna chop the celery. We're gonna untin these tomatoes. We're gonna pour out some lentils. We're gonna cook. We're gonna chop some garlic. So I think we should just do it. If you're lucky enough to be Tory enough to have an electric can opener, you can just use an electric can opener to open up your uh, chopped tomato tins. But if you're a working class scrub like me, you go old school. This series is political. So then, what you want to get going on is you want Big metal pan. You want sort of hot but medium heat. Closer to hot than medium, but m more medium than hot. And get some oil going. Extra virgin, the way the Catholic Church likes it. And then just get your oil nice and hot. Like the Catholic Church likes it. Bung all of this lot in. And stir like this for 10 minutes until it's soft. Oh shit, I've completed the story of this. Wow. Pour in the wine and leave to reduce for two to three minutes. Sorry mum, you can't have it to drink. It's for cooking. Reduce, god damn it. So next up, you want to be adding garlic, balsamic vinegar, tomato puree and oregano. And now we're dumping everything else. Meanwhile, okay, once this starts boiling like it is, you want to reduce it to a simmer and leave it for about 30 minutes on a low heat. I'm half cover it with a spoon making it open. So, when that 10 minute timer goes off, you want to stir it. When the 40 minute timer goes off, you want to start putting your pasta on, and then about 10 minutes after that, uh, your dinner should be ready. So we'll be eating at about five, maybe just after. I don't know, it's not exact science. It's culinary science. But yeah, so every 10 minutes you stir that and then with 10 minutes to go, after 40 minutes, you want to uh, put your pasta on. When you've got 40 minutes into simmering the sauce, you want to put the kettle on and then the next time your timer goes off, uh, you want to Fill up that pasta, well spaghetti uh, pan, and boil it, chuck some salt in, little dash, tiny amount of olive oil, makes it go a long way, but also this, you want it to be about five now because you want to be removing, you know, some of that liquidity aspect of it. And don't forget a very critical ingredient, some soy sauce, just a dash, right at the end. It'll make a difference. This looks a lot more like Tika from this angle, from this cut. Oh no, it's changed. 
and sad. So today I am hosting the Grid Talk preview for Monaco, the Monaco Grand Prix next weekend, that's happening next weekend. Monaco, wow, it's been over a year since we last had Monaco, um, because obviously we didn't do Monaco in F1 for 2020 because of the Covid situation, um, it just wasn't possible to have a street circuit like that. But this year it looks like it's going ahead. I should hope it's going ahead since it's happening next weekend. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting, exciting possibly. Um, but yeah, hosting the preview, lots of questions to ask, you know. Is it all going to depend on qualifying? Are Red Bull going to be impacted by the bendy rear wings? And obviously, you know, just what is going to stop Lewis Hamilton winning that eighth? championship. Find out on uh, this weekend's episode of uh, Grid Talk. Link in the description. It was Hungary 2019 all over again last time out in Spain, but this weekend sees the long-awaited return to the tight, twisty street circuit of Monaco, and with many questions left yet to answer, we welcome you back to the Formula 1 Grid Talk podcast to preview all the big talking points ahead of the Formula 1 Grand Prix de Monaco. My name is Ruby Price, and joining me today we have Philip Matthew, from the Grip Strip podcast. Yeah, there we go. Uh, co host of the DNF1 podcast, Adam Burns. Hi. And sports journalist, Mikhail Kataya. Hi. Ah, so show's done. Uh, very happy with how that went. And just before it, I found out that at 3 a.m. tonight, so tomorrow morning basically, I'm doing my first trial shift, which is scary but also exciting. Um, it does mean that I might end up needing to delay a week ago a little bit. We'll find out tomorrow based on how quickly I can get it edited post um, trial shift between 3 and 9 a.m. But yeah, uh, that's that's something. That's definitely something. Um, I will probably like end this a week ago and then start the next one before it, but you know. Anyway, that show went really well. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out. And yeah, now to draft. And so as I prepare to switch off for the night until 2am when I have to wake up to get ready for a trial shift um, for my first uh, job that's not the die works. Um, I'm going to call that a week. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do all that generic YouTube stuff. Like, share, comment, subscribe, etc, etc. Uh, if you are still waiting on stickers, uh, that's because we haven't actually managed to get them sorted yet. Uh, there's been some tech problems and stuff like that, so it's still happening. Just hold on a minute. Yeah. Uh, if your address changes, find a way of getting into contact with me, and we'll sort something. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So, as always, I have been Ruby Price, and I shall see you a week ago. Adios. Bye.